creeping through the pre-dawn darkness of an eastern shore farm field. Department of Natural Resources biologist Bob Long works quickly and quietly in the February chill, readying a trap to capture a creature that lurks in the nearby woods. With a keen sense of sight and sound, As the sun rises, he bides his time. Keep everything as natural as possible so they don't send any, anybody here. Until finally, they appear. Wild turkeys. Wild turkeys have very keen senses. They're exceptionally wary. They're constantly looking for danger. But these particular birds can rest easy. Bob is after females, or hens. These are gobblers. We'll give it another few hours and see if they show up. Today's stakeout is part of a comprehensive wild turkey population survey, which scientists hope will help solve an important mystery about these paranoid birds. The case of the disappearing turkeys. Prior to European settlement, turkey populations were very healthy. There was reports of early settlers that said that there were flocks of hundreds of turkeys pretty much everywhere that they went. But over time, unrestricted hunting took its toll, and logging eliminated large swaths of habitat. By the turn of the 20th century, Maryland's wild turkeys had vanished from all but the westernmost tip of the state. Hope came in the form of new technology, the rocket net, a device invented in the 50s that enabled the capture of live birds. We relocated those birds around the state to suitable habitats that were just unoccupied, and the population took off, and they did quite well. In some places, they still are. In other areas, like where we're at now, they've peaked and now they've started to decline. We're trying to understand why that is, what factors might have caused this decline in reproduction. Back in the blind, Bob's patience is about to pay off. Finger on the detonator, he watches for the perfect moment and then. He runs. So once we deploy the net, we try to get on those birds as quickly as possible to make sure that they don't lose too many feathers or harm themselves in the net. Birds extricated. Bob and his crew collect weights and blood samples before attaching radio transmitters to the hens because they're the ones that are nesting and raising young, kind of driving that population. We're looking at the impact of everything from predators, weather, habitat, disease. Finally, after a flurry of activity, it's time to turn loose these turkeys turned informants and hope that they lead the way to clues. On a sunny June morning, late into the breeding season, Bob drives the rural back roads of Wacomico County, an antenna trained on the tree line. We can generally tell how close we are just based on the volume of the pings. Right now, he's in range of a hen nesting in the nearby woods. The transmitter that's on this hen has been collecting data a quick download, and he has a GPS track, plus movement data from an accelerometer. And it looks like she was flushed from that location where she was roosting sometime during the night, which is not typical behavior. So we're fairly certain that she's lost that nest for some reason, and we'll need to go in and investigate the fate of that nest. It's not easy going. 
But after about a half an hour of searching this mucky bog, they find it, the scene of the crime. This is what we call the nest bowl. It's just a shallow depression on the ground. Feathers scattered out through the vegetation. There's no evidence of any eggshells. Foxes will do that. It could be a raccoon, although usually raccoons will leave some eggshell remnants around. Only one out of every four or five nests actually successfully hatches. Understanding why nests fail is just part of the puzzle. Bob also hopes to crack the code of why certain nests succeed. Pretty good nesting cover. Yeah. One of Bob's birds has been sitting still in this field for the past 28 days. The precise incubation period of a wild turkey. Yesterday, she left. It's well hidden amongst the dense grasses. Looks like it hatched. Which likely helped these eggs avoid detection by predators. Nine, 10, 11, 12. No one hatched, no predated. So these types of habitats just generally are not as common as they once were. One of our hypotheses that maybe that is a limiting factor on turkey populations. Early the next morning, Bob's back out, tracking a different bird. Once those poults hatch out, it's a real high mortality rate. Small odds of growing into a, an adult turkey. You know what these woods are like, so let's try to cut through here. So what we're doing today is trying to locate this hen and see, number one, if she has young surviving, and then number two, how many. Creeping as close as they dare, they crouch down and play a recording of a lost poult's cry. An attempt to lure the hen and her young out from hiding. Bob watches through an infrared camera. You can see live animals, anything with a heat signature. She is, I see her there. She's alone. But amongst the brush, a lost poult cries out. This one, the real deal. That poult, it's just hiding in that briar patch. At least one baby bird has beaten the odds. As for the bigger mystery, that of the disappearing turkeys, Bob is still hot on the case. I think turkeys are really special to a lot of people. They're a pretty large, very charismatic bird. I think it's important to restore these species to their historic range. So the more detail that we can get, the more it informs our management strategies and we can try to understand what's happening. Stream anytime, anywhere with the free PBS app.